Hi, I'm Dustin Dolby. Today I'd love to run you through my workflow for photographing this bold wine look. And this is shot with a single speed light. Um, would you look at that? Look at this quality. It's really edgy and it suits certain kinds of wines. I really like this label. It's like glittery and sandpapery almost and it's kind of sultry and I thought it suited this kind of look. So let me show you the four exposures I'd pick up to shoot this with a single speed light. Okay, enough blabbering. Let me run you through the workflow. So I have a single strip light in the back here and it's gonna carve out that edge light that we enjoyed seeing earlier. And we'll see a really fundamental exposure we get here. It's just that left kind of edge light that really cuts it out. I'm not sure exactly where this green reflection uh, or refraction is coming from. Leave me a comment below if you know, because I really can't figure it out. Now I spent a bit of time positioning that to be where I wanted it. Um, let me show you a trick you can just do right in camera. If you bring in a black background, face it away from your strip box, and we'll almost get a perfect render um, organically just from that. Now that's really flirting with the edge there. But you see how useful an exposure like this could be on say darken mode in Photoshop. It's a really useful tool. So we'll move the black background out and we just have to flip this over symmetrically. And sometimes that's harder than it sounds. You know, you just try to do it by eye, but fingers crossed. Leave me a comment below if you're enjoying wine photography because I'll probably expand on this quite a bit further. Okay, that looks kind of cool, but it's obviously too thick. Now something we can do right away to make a highlight thinner is just tilt the strip box um, so that the perspective really makes it thinner from the camera's point of view. Maybe a bit more. Thumb up the video guys, it helps me sort of climb in my SEO and have more people see this kind of content. Okay, so we're starting to get close. So what I enjoy doing now is bringing up our previous frame as a compare variant. So now we can zoom in to our previous frame and notice you know, little details like exactly how far the specular highlight climbs up the shoulder and do a back and forth and see if you're in the right ballpark. And we can make minor adjustments from here. All right, so a slight adjustment there. And I think this will sit really nicely because you can't really go wrong when you're comparing your two screens. Now we're just gonna bring in our black background again. And you know, this is a nice benefit because it also helps the edges of the bottle reflect uh, less of a bright color. And once again, we are just flirting with the edge there, but we did it. Okay, so we'll bring this exposure and this exposure into post. All right, so let me show you one of the most uh, powerful, really, exposures you can really capture. And it's bringing your strip box behind your item. Because this will create a mask for you, which you can use in Photoshop and not spend the rest of your years, you know, cutting things out with a pen tool. There's nothing like having the actual light itself kind of decide your selection. All right, so now I'm just straight freestyling it with the strip box, and I'm gonna bring this right above our item. And you could get a stand to do this, but it's a good workout. It's a good way to stay fit while you're shooting wine. And by centering the strip light, strip box, above our subject, you see I get a really kind of romantic glow that suits that sort of velvety material I was talking about that exists in the label. And this looks nice, it looks a little dark. What do you guys think? Now here's the problem, I am at one over one speed with my speed light. So it'd be nice to have some more juice here, so to speak, but you know, we can recover shadow details here and the underexposed nature of it will still suit the low key style we're going for. So let me just run you through the quickest trick to introduce more information into your label in terms of brightness without having to rely on Photoshop if you don't want. And it says take a bare bulb exposure. It's gonna look kind of, honestly, it actually looks kind of magical because of this velvety uh, material, but it's gonna provide you a lot of information and you can blend that in with your previous softbox exposure and end up with something really strong to comp in. So this exposure, uh, these edge lights, which we are going to mask together with a simple gradient, add it on darken mode with a few little tricks of the trade and I'll meet you in post to run you through the rest of that editing workflow. Okay, and here we are guys in Photoshop. Now I noticed I went through that video quite quickly. I enjoy concise tutorials. Too many people on the internet have wasted my time. But if you need any help, any help at all, any clarification, please just leave me a comment. I love helping and engaging with my workflow community. So here are the four exposures I brought in. I actually used the bare bulb exposure, the left edge light, right edge light, and the selection frame. Now I've already made uh, clipping paths, but let me show you how I would deal with this selection frame. I'd basically make a new layer above it, hit L, 
make a really crude selection around the wine bottle. Control shift I to invert that selection, then alt delete to paste my foreground color, which is white. Then I like to select modify, expand it by two pixels and alt delete again. Because sometimes when I don't do that, I get a one pixel uh, sort of slice of transparency where these lines exist for some reason. And these lines are called marching ants. They're kind of marching. It's kind of cool. Here's your fun fact of the day. So I'll merge that with my selection frame. And once you have this straight with the use of rulers, and you can bring up rulers by just dragging them out from the side and making sure everything's nice and straight. Control H to hide them. That's how I'm doing that. But once everything is straight, you can just use a elliptical marquee, which I enjoy doing, and sort of do a wide marquee down at the bottom. And then you can Control Shift I, invert that, hit B to bring up your brush. Boy, I'm throwing the hotkeys at you at double speed today. And then you can just brush whiteness in there. And you can touch that up and make it more perfect, but that's essentially a selection right there. So that's some powerful stuff. One beautiful thing is once you make the bottle selection, which I've already done, um, the cap selection, for instance, can be really crude because, you know, you can always subtract it from your other selection. So really the only information we need to be masked out is that line going across the label there. But this around here could be really crude because we already have all that really intricate information. And I know I said this earlier, but man, there's nothing like having light determine your selection. And I mean, who enjoys using the pen tool? Maybe Aaron Nace from Flern might be the only person. He's a great guy. So let's move forward with this. You've seen me do this in the tutorial. I'm going to bring out a mask, and I'm actually going to make it black by inverting it. And I can hit G to bring up my gradient tool and just do a simple white to transparent gradient across there. And right away, I mean, that kind of looks like, you know, a little beautiful lighting setup uh, already. That's the canvas from which we're going to paint on the label and the top cap. Let's grab all these layers, and I put it in a black background behind it. and we will select the bottle and we will hit this mask button and then I'll mask it out. And that's kind of when everything really clicks into reality. Like, boy, we're, we're unlocking some powerful potential right here. This looks like a little studio ensemble. So where can we go from here? Well, let's take a look at our bare bulb exposure. Now up here is dustier than all heck. And if I disable my layer mask, I don't know what's dustier, the wine bottle or my sensor, because, oh, look at that. I'm a bit ashamed of that. But let me know, leave me a comment, what's dustier, my sensor or the wine bottle or my name. My name's Dustin, folks. So all we really want from this is the cap and the label. So I'll select that. Actually, you know, before that, I'll duplicate my variable exposure. I like to separate my cap and my label. So I'll select my cap and hit that mask button again and okay I was wondering why it was not happening but we had two layers and I'll select my label and I'll go back to that rear bulb exposure and I'll hit the mask again now we can bring in these layers and what I'm going to do with them is put them on linear dodge add mode which uh, just adds them and you never would have figured that out if I didn't tell you and this looks kind of cool because we get some nice light spill on the sides and it really ties in with the label and it looks real which is nice now you can clean up these selections and whatnot. One thing I like to do is actually feather my mask by how much you guessed it, 0 0.8 pixels. The most arbitrary number ever, but it seems to work. And, you know, you guys would really like my tutorial. It's called How to Photograph Simple Products to Look Dramatic. I get really deep into the post-production I use to make things look perfect, but I'll just do a few touch-ups just to do this quickly. Like, I might bring black as my foreground color since we are clipping to black here completely. And on a new layer, I can do things like, you know, just get rid of little weird stuff like that. And I'd sort of spend some time tweaking my whole image, to be honest. So one cool thing I can do is I can make these lines a bit more symmetrical. Because, you know, we tried to do that in camera, but it's tricky. I'll hit L to bring up my lasso tool. And on a new layer, maybe I'll just literally, like, do this. And I'm sort of starting to bleed into information here because we got some data but I might do something like that and then on this uh, side maybe do something similar I'd spend a lot more time but you know you can do little creative things like that to make it perfectly symmetrical there's an on and off it's not a big difference and I could clean up these edges there's a bit of spill light but I enjoy that because everything's such a stark contrast anyway you know we could use a bit of information to be honest 
So besides, you know, really tweaking things for an hour and a half, I mean, this is really your essential exposure. And normally I'm not a fan of when wines clip into complete blackness. Um, you know, we lose all details in the shadows, but within this context, this punchy context, I kind of think it works. So I'm going to control J, duplicate that layer, and I will control T. No, I won't. I'm going to right click my layer mask and apply it. Why can't I apply that layer mask? I think I have to control E first, which merges it, and then I can apply that layer mask. You know, I'm learning just like you guys are learning. You know what I mean? Control T, right click, flip vertical, click it and hold shift and drag that down. And you're going to see our reflection emerge. And I'll just do this quick and crude, but that looks good enough. Now, what I want to do is make a new layer above my black background. And I'm going to hit Control G to group it right away. And normally I don't name my layers, but I'll go out of my way and call this one BG. And what I want to do is I want to give it a layer mask. And I only want it to exist kind of down here. And I'll show you why in a moment. So I'll fill that with black. So it's only existing above that area. So now I can hit G to bring up my gradient. I'll switch to a radial gradient. And I'll hit I to bring up the eyedropper. And I'll sample color from here. And I'm getting some nice deep purples. But I'd like something a little more intense. Boy, I love that label. And it's really nice because if it is dusty, you can't tell because it's so glittery, it just overpowers it. How the heck can I sample a purple? Oh, there we go. I got a purple. I'll go to that layer, hit G. I'll click in the middle and drag out. And boy, something's not right there. You know what we got to do? We got to add a black layer below all of this. And that's really easy to do. So Alt Delete and add a black layer there. And that looks a bit more accurate. Now, that was kind of cool. I did it off the first hop. And you know, you could get way more complex with this. Um, you could also duplicate this if you wanted to, and you could invert the layer mask. And that, then what you could do is you could do crazy stretches and, you know, really, oh, no, you don't want to stretch that. But you could get within your layer and stretch that just to make it kind of different. You know what I mean? I'll accept that. And you could just bleed in a little bit of information just so you're adding some realism. But I'm not interested in doing that today. I really want the intense contrast look. And you could do multiple gradients, but something like that's quite simple. What do you think? So, do you know what? I'm just going to merge all of this information. And the last thing I might want to do is Control J to duplicate that. And I'll do Filter Noise, Add Noise. Now, I should mention my screen recording software is brutal. You guys probably see like each step in here. It's called banding, but my screen recording software amplifies it like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, put a dollar in my tip jar. The Patreon's in the description below if you want me to have better screen recording software. But in the meantime, we're going to have to add a lot of noise to mitigate that. So filter noise, add noise, and let's do a uh, egregious amount of noise. It looks disgusting, but you don't see banding, or maybe you do if YouTube compression is really whack. But with no noise, you see a lot of banding. I usually find around 3% looks good, um, but I bet the banding still looks brutal on YouTube. So why don't I kick it up to 4%? And by adding noise, it just uh, distributes the information a bit more. Now, I'm zoomed in to 183%. So if you're viewing this at 100%, I mean, the noise doesn't really bother me. It just kind of ties everything together in terms of the color information and prevents banding. So you can spend a lot more time, but guys, this is such a powerful workflow. I mean, you could do so many of these, and it's such a cool, punchy look. You don't see it every day. So here's my final version. And let me actually zoom into it because I really like this look. I want you guys to see it again. And it was so easy, which really blows my mind. I mean, you can spend a million dollars in studio equipment making something half as good as this. Sure, it clips to black, but, you know, we're trying to go for a punchy, bold style. And I really think it works. Hey, guys, make sure to like my page on Facebook because I'm constantly updating speed light setups. And stay tuned for more episodes. I promise I will deliver that whiskey episode sooner than you think. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for watching Workflow. Thank you.